Hey everyone, it's Raj from the Injury Insight. So today's topic is looking at the two latest non-contact ACL ruptures. One suffered by Cooper Cup while running a route versus Seahawks. And secondly, suffered by Ronald Darby while trying to cover Amari Cooper. So I'll be going over three things. Firstly is each is mechanism of injury or how they got hurt. Secondly is their return to play timeline. And thirdly is what to expect when they get back. So let's start with a play where Cooper Cup got hurt. And there's two things I want you to notice. First is this spot where he takes contact up top. I'll talk more about that in a second. And right here on this cut as well. It's very important to know. And then right immediately after that cut, he goes down. Here's Ronald Darby's play against Amari Cooper. Cooper makes a nice hitch route, then cuts back up the field. You can see Darby come up limping. Here it is one more time. I'll freeze it at the kind of the key point. I'll tell you why in a second. But first, let's go into why ACLs are torn in their first place. Now, the first reason is over rotation, which puts too much stress on the ACL. Secondly, is hyperextension, the knee going backwards that again stresses the ACL too much. The most common cause for a non contact ACL injury is the rotational stress. So, here's a picture that depicts that. In the upper leg, the femur, it's adducting, meaning it's moving toward midline and internally rotating, so rotating inwards. Secondly, the bottom leg is planted or it's, it's rotating outwards, externally rotating. You have two forces going in the opposite direction that puts huge stress on the ACL and can cause it to rupture. And that's actually what we saw with both Cooper Cup and Darby. So here's a couple pictures about that. So the first picture is regarding Cooper Cup and it's one of the moments that I froze during when I showed the video. So you can see that here his foot is planted and that upper leg is driving inwards, the knee is driving inwards as well. And it's creating that rotational force. Also he has what's known as a perturbation in his upper body. There's contact there which can throw his neuromuscular system for a loop. So that neuromuscular system is essentially, it's a feedback system. In this visual, there's a lot of words here, but the key thing is to understand it's a feedback system that tells your brain where your body is in space. So when you get these contact points, it's adding extra variables to the equation. So in Cooper Cup's case, he has that extra variable, his body has to respond to that feedback while he's cutting, which can then inhibit some of those safety mechanisms in his lower body when he goes to cut. So now moving on to Ronald Darby. This one was much harder to see, but I believe the ACL rupture during this movement when he made that hard, spontaneous second cut when Cooper cut back up the field, which then led to that adduction and internal rotation of his right knee, which put that stress on the ACL. Generally, we know that it's spontaneous cutting movements that are the most responsible for non-contact ACL ruptures with that rotational stress. The next step for Cooper Cup and Ronald Darby is ACL reconstruction. So the process starts with them cleaning out the remaining parts of the ligament. Then the surgeon drills holes in the two spots where he wants to thread the new ACL through using the graph. So here you go. Drill in the holes. Thread this new graft in. That's going to serve as the new ACL ligament. And they kind of suture it down at the end and then close the knee up. Key thing I always focus on in any rehab is that person's mindset. So will Cooper Cup and Ronald Darby have what I call a growth mindset, meaning they, they're seeing this setback as a challenge or a fixed mindset where they're kind of seeing it as an obstacle that they cannot get over. And that mentality affects 
everything else. In Ronald Darby's case, he's coming up in a free agency year, so he might feel a little more pressure and stress to get back quicker, and that might affect some of that emotional context for him. So there's a new protocol in ACL rehab called an accelerated rehab protocol where players are coming back earlier and earlier. And this really might have started after AP's ACL injury where he came back pretty dang quickly and he came back really good. But I always warn, I believe he's the outlier in many things. What we've seen with these rehab protocols is that there is an increased risk of re-injury there's ongoing abnormality side to side for almost 22 months. And generally from talking to many different providers, the longer, the better for ACL rehab because it allows a graft to heal. Generally, the outcomes for players after surgery is pretty dang good. Like I said before, the average return is a little over 10 months and nearly 83% of elite athletes return to pre-injury level function and performance after an ACL surgery. And ACL surgery has been perfected to an extent just because there are so many ACL injuries. Now that being said, there are inherent risks that also come after an ACL injury. Research shows that there's a 25% chance of re-rupturing that ACL there's also a 25, excuse me, a 21% chance of rupturing the other ACL. Further, there's some evidence of side-to-side -side asymmetry for over two years, and there's nearly 3.6 higher risk of developing osteoarthritis in the knee, which is when the cartilage in the knee starts to deteriorate at a higher rate than normal. All in all, an ACL injury is never fun, but it's not quite the death knell that it used to be. The outcomes are really, really good. As like I said before, there's so, such a large sample size with it now that the surgery and the rehab has gotten really, really good. So for both Cup and Darby, I expect them to make a full recovery and I expect both to either be really close to go or ready to go by the time the season starts. In Darby's case, he is a free agent, so hopefully he can show enough in that rehab where a team will be willing to sign him moving forward. So that does it for this episode of the Injury Insight. I hope you enjoyed it. You can always follow me at Twitter at, at 3CB Performance. Check out more articles at the Injury Insight. If you're interested in more of the clinical stuff, check out my company, 3CBPerformance.com. Until next time.